As Scarlett just showed us, the news out of China is weighing on stocks across the globe this morning. Our next guest says a significant downturn is ahead for equities. He helps oversee $2 billion in assets. Let's welcome to the Inside Track Stanley Crouch, Chief Investment Officer at Aegis Capital. So, Stanley, is this what you had in mind, or at least some of what you had in mind, when you looked ahead, stared into your crystal ball, and said, <laughs> we're due for a fall? Well, I'm looking at a lot of inc incident uh, indicators. So uh, when we look at ECRI, for instance, they reiterated their recession call. And usually those things tend to get ahead of the market. So we've seen this big rise this year, which we expected, but it's already met targets of a lot of analysts for the entire year. So what tends to happen is people go back and do a linear recalculation and project it out linear linearly. We don't think that's the way it's going to go. We think that we're going to see a correction that we've been waiting for, followed by another rise and then uh, a turnout. Could a, could a cut, though, in, in China's growth target be the catalyst for that correction? A lot of things can be the catalyst. It depends on what shifts sentiment. Europe's still on the table. You know, the Greek situation is not uh, settled yet. There's a lot to go there. Portugal spreads have blown out again. And when things are supposed to be more settled, Spain's having difficulty with their fiscal constraints. So there's a lot of things still on the table. How do you manage that long-term view, though? You have $2 billion to manage, and the market's gone one direction all year up. Correct. Well, we've been participating in it because we expect no, a rise, but we've got to try to time it correctly, too. We've also reserved a considerable amount of cash. We'll go much higher to cash once we believe we've topped out and we'll be uh, a lot more defensive right then. So you're worried about all these risks, including the global economy. But as long as central banks are in there, like we saw the European Central Bank last week, how do you know when it's time to actually sell? Well, because longer term, what we're still suffering from is the manifestation of an aggregate multi-decade debt bubble. Shifting it to central banks and privatizing or to what was pro failed privatized risk to the public ledger is really not a long-term solution. We've got to get that aggregate debt down. And it's either going to happen naturally or unnaturally, as the case may be. Uh, there's no question that the debt levels are unsustainable. And how we manifest that correction is what's critical. And what we've done is we've shifted the burden. So for instance, look at LTRO. LTRO, good idea. It was needed at the time. It maybe averted the instantaneous crisis of the banking system in Europe. But now, where's the beef? So what are the banks going to do with the second round, for instance? And because of the constraints of LTRO itself being a three-year instrument, they're going to limit themselves to three-year paper at the outside. And we've seen redeposits back into ECB at a lower rate. So there's actually a negative carry it's trade. It's not all good news, I guess. Stanley, no. you mentioned that you have a big cash position. How much right now? 50%. 50% cash. So you are participating in the equity rally, but only so much because you've got cash sitting on your books that's earning less than 1%, presumably. Why? Because you think you're going to be able to pick up stocks at much cheaper prices in the very near future? Yes, and bonds too. Because if we go back to 2008, when risk assets all got crushed at the same time, bonds were not unscathed. So while the Federal Reserve lowered the discount rate and the and the uh, Fed funds rate to near zero, it didn't it it didn't save bonds from being collapsed as well. The money you have in the market, where specifically is it invested? We like income producing equities. We like sustainability going forward. So what we're looking for is folks that have coverage that are able to withstand what we see is as, as another you know dip back into a slower economic scenario and I think we're seeing that with China you know China's not lowering their growth rate for fun it makes sense when you think about it if the driver of Chinese growth which it was was developed market economic demand particularly from the consumer and that consumer is compromised it has to knock on it's a mathematical construct at the end of the day all of this is a mathematical construct and we pay attention to those aggregate mathematical models in our minds and in reality to plot this out and say hey let's let's see where we're really doing this aggregate reduction of debt and then we might have the basis for growth now you know look at Europe they're failing. They're failing. 
When's the last time you saw a major restructuring of, say, a corporate entity where the median expectation was failure right out of the gate? Mm -hmm. And that's the truth with Greece, isn't it? Who, you know, people are out loud saying Greece is unsustainable, we'll have to default, yet we're still going to do this. I mean, does that make sense? Let's write it off, write it off now, take the hit, and make sure whatever we do going forward is sustainable and allow the IMF to fulfill their proper function, which is the bridge financing of a sovereign credit default. That's all. Stanley, good of you to join us and help make sense of the global economy and financial markets this morning. He's a cautious man, 50% cash, Stanley Crouch of Aegis Capital here on the Inside Track.